Thanks again for listening to another unmetered story brought to you by Middle Tennessee Electric. Ever hear the story of a man from the snow belt that changed the sun belt? Well, you've probably not, and I hadn't either until I came across his name. Today's story is going to carry you on an interesting ride, so listen up to hear about how a Yankee changed the South. Before we get to the story, though, Middle Tennessee Electric wants to remind all our members and communities about the importance of energy efficiency. Small improvements to your home add up to big big savings. For instance, did you know that your HVAC system consumes roughly 50% of your home's energy each month? If you maintain your unit through the tune-ups and by changing out air filters, you can improve your efficiency, which leads to less wasted energy and extends the life of your unit. Another small thing you can do to make a big difference on your monthly bill is by raising the temperature of your thermostat. Each degree you raise it above 72 degrees can save almost 3% on your bill. Of course, it depends on the size of your home and some other factors, but I think you understand kind of the concept we're talking about. It makes a difference. Of course, if you do have a question about your home's efficiency, give us a call at 877-777-9020 to schedule an appointment for an e-score home audit by one of our energy services coordinators. It's just one more benefit our members have access to through their local electric cooperative. For a list of more benefits and energy saving tips, check out experiencemembership.coop. That's experiencemembership.coop co-op. Now, the story you've all been waiting for, or maybe not if you aren't a fan of history and things that are cool, here's the story called The Yankee That Changed the South. Angola, New York. You've probably never heard of the place unless you were born there, and even then, it was probably one of those towns where you wanted to get away from in your younger years to move to a big city, but eventually wanted to settle down to. Because Angola is south of Buffalo, kind of like how Woodbury is in relation to Nashville. It's a small town of about 2,000 people today, but in the 1870s, it had about 700 people there, six or 700, somewhere in that range, of those few hundred people in Angola, two people gave birth to a legend. I'm not talking about the legendary Chris Leitner, the Angola native who was a gold medal winning basketball player and famously hated ex-NBA player, or the... Angola native legendary Monroe Salisbury. I'm talking about the silent film actor, not the state guy, so no confusion there. No, the legend I'm talking about today goes by the name of Willis. Willis was born and raised in Angola before graduating from Cornell University and getting a job at the Buffalo Forge Company as an engineer in 1901. The world was a different time a century ago in Buffalo, and electricity had only become mainstream within the past couple decades, and there was a large opportunity for inventions utilizing this new mainstream power source. And so Willis was tasked with working on a project for a paper company. I don't know about you, but when I think of an invention that changes the world we live in today and creates a legend, I don't think about paper. You know, I might, I might think about food processing or the automotive industry. I might even think about construction or aeronautics, but not paper. Uh, and, and never paper. Actually, I'd, probably paper would be at the very bottom of the list. But It was through a printing plant project that Willis began his journey to uh, legendary status. It even got him on Time's list of 100 most influential people of the 20th century. It all stems from paper, and that kind of kind of is odd. I'm not that just the truth of that, in my opinion. But. Before the printing press project in 1902, Willis completed a project for the Buffalo Forge Company, which saved them about $40,000 a year in production costs. Uh, For those of you who are curious like me and wanted to do the math to find out how much that would be in today's uh, economy, that'd be about a million dollars. So obviously the bosses decided he was qualified to head up a new department in in the company focused on experimental development. I mean, if you save a company a million dollars a year, they pretty much let you pick which position you, you want to take, I guess. Um, but it was, a, it was a great opportunity for him. One of his first tasks was to fix a print quality issue at the Sackett & Wilhelm's lithography and printing press. They were experiencing an issue with their printing consistency due to the paper and ink changing between jobs. You see, you see when there is too much water in the air, the paper and ink absorb some of that water, which makes the sheets heavier, the ink thinner, and makes it harder on large print jobs. Willis had to figure out a way to lower the amount of water in the air to optimize their printing presses and improve the quality of those large jobs. To solve this problem, Willis decided to reverse engineer steam to figure out how to remove water from the air. Now, this may seem like a simple task, but in 1902, many of the technological advances which we take for granted had not been invented yet. 
Willis, being the observant person that he was, one day noticed condensation forming around cold objects. You know, like when your mirror gets fogged up because it's colder than the steam of your shower? Well, he decided to test out running cold water through coils and blowing the air of the paper plant over the coils to remove the excess water from the air. This resulted in the creation of the first dehumidifier and by, uh, you know, just by the very nature of that invention, created the humidifier as well by reversing the process with hot water to create steam. He continued to work on his design and patented in January of 1906 under the name of the Apparatus for Treated Air. Very, very catchy. I, I don't know, maybe not so catchy, but soon his apparatus for treated air was a nationwide hit and began to be used in manufacturing, textile, and printing plants across the country. Willis and a few other engineers formed a new company to mass produce his new invention. Another man, not a part of this company that Willis created, named Stuart Kramer of Charlotte, North Carolina, decided to create a version of Willis's humidifier for his textile mill to improve its efficiency. Kramer filed his adaptation uh, of Willis's invention for a patent in 1906 for to be for his humidifier variation, you might call it, but he used a different name. Okay, so a, a name different from the apparatus for treated air. Again, I don't think that's very catchy, but again, but Willis, being the legend that he was, that's where he started. Instead, Kramer used a different name, and it was one that Willis would quickly adopt for his own company and as it continued to grow. So what was the term that Kramer used to influence Willis' invention? Well, he called it an air conditioner. Besides being able to control the humidity in a factory, Willis' apparatus for treated air, again, not loving the name, also created hot and cold air as a byproduct. These air conditioners, as Kramer called it, and soon Willis called it as well, became the foundation of Willis' company, the Carrier Engineering Corporation. It's changed names a few times, but today we all call it the Carrier United Technologies, a world leader in the air conditioning and refrigeration industry. And that's the unmetered of Willis Carrier, the legend from the small town of Angola, New York, who invented the first air conditioner. His creation eventually was adapted for a variety of uses which are used every day. I told you at the beginning about how a legend from the snow belt forever changed the sun belt, and as you can tell, I wasn't lying. Can you imagine a world where the South didn't have air conditioning in homes, businesses, or even automobiles? For, for all of us who sweat too much as it is, I want to say a special thanks to Willis Carrier, the Yankee that changed the South. Don't forget to check out experiencemembership.coop to learn about the benefits of membership at Middle Tennessee Electric. If you get a bill from us, you're more than just a customer. You're a member, and membership has benefits. Thanks again for listening. We look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.